Now that we've seen a successful example of how to solve a system of equations using matrices, let's look at an unsuccessful example. And no, I'm not talking about the copy error that I made earlier. I wanna talk about what happens when you accidentally set up a matrix that doesn't have a solution. Uh, what I mean here is what if, you, what if you set up something that is illogical from the beginning? So here I've got three equations. Uh, two of them are incompatible, right? Because I have this thing, 5x1 minus x2 plus x3, and I have the same thing, 5x1 minus x2 plus 7x3. Only in the first equation, I've got it equal to one. On the second equation, I've got it equal to 10. These two left-hand sides should be equal, so their right-hand sides should be equal, but it doesn't matter how good I am at linear algebra, I can never make one equal to 10. It just ain't gonna happen. Let's see what ends up happening if we forge ahead with this problem and try to solve it anyway. So what I'm gonna do is come over to Replit here. One of the nice things about Replit is that it makes it very easy to take your current code that is fine and working and then make a copy of it that you can edit while you leave your original alone. So what I can do is go up to the name of my uh, Replit here, Systems of Equations and Matrices. Uh, I can go to the drop down menu here and tell it to fork. Uh, fork is a git term that says uh, I want to make a copy and I want to work on this copy while I leave the original the same. Uh, so this is going to be systems equation that don't work. We're going to go confirm. And so now I've got a copy of this thing, right? So when I go to my replets uh, over here, I've got two different versions of it, so right, so I can take that whole project, copy it over, so I can work on that on the side, while you can enjoy the original version without having to worry about uh, this monstrous system that isn't going to work. So let's go to the system of equations that don't work. And what I need to do is just change the values here, and this is where you can really see the power of uh, using the matrix, is that I just change all of the coefficients here to match, five, one, negative seven, 5, 1, negative 7, and then negative 4, 6, and negative 1. Uh, let's get down to our answer here for the right-hand side. 1, 10, negative 1. Uh, let's hold off on everybody else. I just want to print those to make sure that this is giving me what I want. I got a 5, negative 1, 7. I got a 5, Oops, well that's already not, that's already not gonna, that's not gonna not work, there we go. Five, negative one, seven, five, negative one, seven, negative four, six, negative one. That is what I wanted, and I have a one, 10, negative one, perfect. So I, now I've perfectly transcribed the problem over here. What I wanna show you is what happens when we try to take the inverse of this matrix. Blah, we get red text, right? Anytime you get an error message, it just means that something went wrong along the way. It doesn't necessarily mean that you did something wrong or that you don't know what you're doing. It just means the computer doesn't know how to proceed. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Uh, so in line 545, see so here it's referencing the actual linalge.py uh, uh, library that it is uh, referencing. Uh, it refers to this as a singular matrix. Let's find out what a singular matrix means. <clears throat> a singular matrix refers to a matrix whose determinant is zero. Furthermore, such a matrix has no inverse, right? So when you are doing the, uh, when you're finding the inverse of a matrix, uh, you have to evaluate the matrix's determinant and you have to take one over that determinant, so you are literally dividing by zero. So this equation cannot have an inverse. Because it cannot have an inverse, I can't multiply that inverse onto this vector v. There's simply no way to solve it. And so even if a problem is unsolvable, that is encoded into the way the linear algebra works, which I think is so just amazing. Uh, okay, just to give us kind of a satisfying ending here, let's suppose I make one slight change to this so that it is invertible. Right now I'm able to get my inverse matrix here. So let's bring everybody back in to the end of the game here. Um, let's take out that for right now. And so there is the answer to this slightly modified version where I change one of the sevens into a six. It gives me this. I wonder what happens if I make them very close to each other. Like what if I make this 6.9999, right? 6.9999 is very close to seven. I wonder what happens to the answer. You notice what's happening here to the answer is that the numbers get enormous, 
right? Because what I'm asking it for, uh, let's say I replace this seven with a 6.9999. I'm saying I want you to take two numbers, two systems of equations that are very similar, but I want you them to give me very different results, right? And so in order for that to work out, in order for those two equations to work out, where that slight change gives me a big change, I need to have the numbers be really big, right? So another way to think about this is that the only way I can get this thing to work is for some of these values to be infinite, right? Uh, let's keep making them closer. Let's make it uh, a few more nines on there. Yeah, see how they're getting even bigger there? So that's blowing up. The only way I can account for that in terms of making them the same is to make the matrix blow up to begin with and have this thing become infinitely big. So there's a little lesson on non-invertible matrices. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.